throughout my life. The Ten Rings gave our family power. Welcome back to Director's Choice. Marvel has been trying to turn this comic book classic into a motion picture since the 1980s. The highly anticipated and what some may say is Marvel's kung fu masterpiece, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. The main character playing Shang-Chi, Simo Lu, brings to life this character and allows us to finally see the origins of Shang-Chi and take us along for his journey. Simo Lu has graced the screen a few times, appearing and starring in television shows like Taken, Bad Blood, and Slasher. We may even see surprise cameos from Tim Roth from Reservoir Dogs and The Incredible Hulk, and Ben Kingsley from Schindler's List and Iron Man 3. Simo Lu gets a chance to show off his talent and bring diversity to this film. Let's dive into it. Here's what you need to know about Shang-Chi. Be careful how you speak to me, boy. First, let's take a look at the origin of Shang-Chi and how this comic book series was chosen to be the next Marvel Studios production. Shang-Chi didn't begin as his own standalone character. He was first created as the unknown son of Dr. Fu Manchu, who was a monstrous, elusive villain in a series of novels written by Sax Romer. Marvel's rival, DC Comics, had the TV show Kung Fu that Marvel wanted to adopt as their own, but didn't receive permission by the show's owner. So, Marvel decided to partner up with Romer and create a spin-off from his book series. From there, they turned Shang-Chi into the master of Kung Fu, who can be described as a similar character to the Kung Fu legend himself, Bruce Lee. Shang-Chi made his appearance in a Marvel Special Edition back in 1973 during the Bronze Age of comic books, which is an era of comic books that were released from the early 70s to the mid 80s. It wasn't until the early 1980s when Shang-Chi would make his first solo debut. Shang-Chi's character is fluent in not only unarmed combat, but also weapon-based combat like Nunchaku and Wushu. Marvel decided to give Shang-Chi numerous appearances in their comic books and gave him his own series named The Hands of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. During this time, there was an infatuation with martial arts in the country, and Shang-Chi quickly became popular in the States. Shang-Chi went from the Master of Kung Fu to the Savage Fists and even Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, alongside characters Iron Fist and White Tiger in Daughters of the Dragon. Most of the additional characters that accompanied Shang-Chi had to be phased out due to licensing issues Marvel was having at the time. Since Shang-Chi's father, Dr. Fu Manchu, could no longer be used, the writers decided to rewrite a spin-off character and name him Zhang Zhu, an alias to Fu. Later in 2020, Marvel began creating a five-issue self-titled series starring Shang-Chi. The initial release date was for June 2020, but due to COVID-19, the series had to be postponed and is said to be releasing in late 2021. Shang-Chi has come a long way and isn't going anywhere anytime soon. We will soon see the wonders of Marvel come September. Shang-Chi seems to have to relive his past by taking on the man who taught him his skill of Kung Fu to begin with, his father. Shang, played by Simo Lu, plays the main character in Marvel's first ever Asian lead movie. Shang seems to be content with the life he's living with his friend by his side, Katie, played by actress Aquafina. It's a simple, average life, but he seems to enjoy it nonetheless. Shang was raised and trained by his father, Wen Wu, played by actor Tony Leung Chu Wai, to become an assassin. My son, you can't run from your past. We see Shang having flashbacks with memories of his past as he recalls the training he endured with his father. The scene shows him having a moment of reflection as he looks at an indentation of his fist print left on a wooden pole in his apartment. Of course, we know that the past always comes back to haunt you, and Shang's past is no exception. Shang is forced into the Ten Rings, an organization ran by his father. He soon realizes that his past isn't so easy to walk away from as he gets into riveting and action-packed scenes full of spin kicks, special effects, and of course, martial arts. In a collection of scenes that are highlighting Shang's skills, you hear a voiceover from what is assumed to be his dad saying to him, you can't outrun who you really are. You can't outrun who you really are. Shang realizes that in order to be able to truly move on, he must fight. Let's get a brief overview of the main cast members of Shang-Chi. 
We started off with the lead role of Shang-Chi being played by Canadian-born actor Simo Liu, a trained assassin who wants to live a normal life and not the life his father wants him to live. Next, we have the role of Shang's father, Wen Wu, played by Hong Kong star Tony Leung. Wen Wu is the head of the Ten Rings organization and gets his power from the Ten Rings. Wen Wu will stop at nothing to get Shang to see that his place is next to him at the head of his throne. Then we have actress Aquafina, who plays Shang's best friend, Katie. Katie seems to be your normal everyday woman who went from working next to Shang as a valet attendant to assisting him in fighting off the Ten Rings. We then move on to Meng Erzhang, the estranged daughter of Wen Wu and sister of Shang-Chi, played by actress Jia Ling. Meng Er tried to overthrow her father's power and was forced to leave his organization. She teams up with her brother to take on the Ten Rings, finally getting rid of her father and his terrorist organization. A longtime enemy of Shang, Razor Fist, played by Florian Muntanu, is still bitter from the numerous losses he suffered from Shang. He wants revenge and has no problem helping his father take him down by showing off his steel blades for hands. Marvel is being super secretive about the roles of the rest of the cast, so we'll have to wait until the fall. Shang-Chi had a rough start due to Marvel's numerous licensing and rival issues. Earlier on in the 1980s, there was discussion of turning Shang into a television series with Bruce Lee playing the role of the father and Brandon Lee as Shang. In 2001, well-known director Stephen Norrington was hired to direct the film, The Hands of Shang-Chi. A famous Chinese film company, DMG, wanted to introduce Shang-Chi in a teaser at the end of The Avengers, but President Chris Fenton rejected Marvel's offer. Because of Wen Wu's character, back then known as the Mandarin, DMG risked being shut down due to him being perceived as a negative stereotype. It wouldn't be until 2013 when Mandarin made an appearance in Iron Man 3. We have yet to receive any additional information on Ben Kingsley's role in Shang-Chi. There are rumors that he is to make a cameo appearance since he was the Mandarin. By 2018, Marvel was on its way to finally create the movie for Shang-Chi. Marvel decided they needed to have their first Asian lead and have Asian Americans write the film. They already had released Black Panther, which had an African American lead, cast and writers. They wanted to create a film that was rich in Asian and Asian American culture. So Shang-Chi was born, and now the Marvel fans are anticipating this much-awaited release. In a few short months, we'll get to see all of the secrets Marvel kept to themselves. Even though some of the cast members' roles are being held captive, there is still some built-up excitement around this film. Shang-Chi has had a lengthy journey from features in comic books to full film, featuring some new faces to the scene and some familiar ones. If you're a fan of Marvel and martial arts, then Shang-Chi is most definitely a must-see. Thanks for watching and be sure to look at this other recent clip by Director's Choice and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified with our latest videos.